Hi friends, this is NJ, host on this channel. So finally, we have reached the last part of our discussion on the fingerprints. This topic is very important, which we are going to discuss in this video because you know when it comes to the fingerprints, there has not been much work which has been done by majority of the palmist. All those topics which I present you over here, they, those topics remain to be the you know the kind of the tested version from my side because not only I read different books, but I also practically look at people's hand as well to verify and validate all those claims made by the palmist so when it comes to all those topics which we have studied so far you'll find in different books of the palmistry but when it comes to the science of the fingerprints you will not find these topics to the core explained to the core in majority of the books of the palmistry and as you people know fingerprints are very important because they take you to the core of someone's personality they are not subjected to change compared to the lines marked on your palm so let's begin our discussion on this there would remain to be a little bit of the calculation the mathematical part which will be used in this video but you have to you know grasp that very clearly very carefully because that will give you a strong hold in you know uh, doing the ana uh, analysis and the assessment of the fingerprints so let's begin our discussion a quick overview of the introduction part of the dermatographics which we have studied so far the study of the fingerprints marked on your palm come under the science of the dermatographics dermatographics has been derived from the two greek words derma which means skin glapto which means engravings when it comes to diagnosing these fingerprints the most important you know tool is a tri ready a triangular pattern which gets formed by the intersecting ridge patterns it these ridge patterns engraved engraved ridge patterns of the skin which helps in determining in whether you are seeing a loop pattern an uh, arch pattern or you are seeing a vole pattern these fingerprints you know they act as a channel for the sweat glands they also facilitate the sense of the touch so we have discussed about all those things now when it comes to the three basic factors when it comes to the study of the finger and palm prints because the way we have been uh, doing our you know following our journey on the study of the fingerprints is that in the first video we discussed the introductory part which i have explained to you then we uh, took uh, the fingerprints one by one and discuss them in detail so the very first was you know the loop fingerprint pattern because why i'm saying this thing is that in this video uh, i'm just i have just consolidated the whole study of the fingerprints and as well as the palm prints so the three basic factors in the study of fingers and palm prints are the first is ridge patterns which we have discussed so far the first ridge pattern which we discussed was of the loop and as i have explained to people that loop people remain to be very adaptable very versatile very elastic you know kind of very flexible with their emotional and their physical needs so the loop which can also be you know uh, sub categorized into uh, more categories like ulna loop ulnar loop in which people remain to be very flexible then comes the radial loop radial loop remain to be little bit of you know concerned about their needs and along with that if their needs are getting fulfilled then they do not face any kind of problem in uh, you know going uh, in flow with the rest of the wish and wills of the teammates then comes the composite loop composite loop means you know s kind of formation where the person is always you know vacillating in his while making choices and the last walk last was peacock's eye combination so all that we have discussed under the loop pattern the second was the vole pattern in which we discussed the two two versions of the uh, vole which was you know a spiral one as well as the concentric one concentric remains to be the more intense uh, intensified version of the vole and spiral remains to be little bit lesser and you know um, mild version of the vole and the last was the arch which we have discussed in which the arch fingerprint you will find you know uh, uh, a basic arch as well as a tented arch so we have discussed all of that and we have also discussed certain kind of uh, patterns which gets formed on the palm where uh, they will indicate towards different kind of distinctive traits so like for example what we have discussed in the past videos that if you will find a loop in between this index finger and the middle finger this would just tells about you know noble dynasty if if you will find a loop over here in between the middle finger and the ring finger this would just indicate dedication towards work so all of that we have discussed in the past video so we are clear with the ridge patterns now there are certain two more you know basic factors which you also have to understand in order to you know uh, accurately do the uh, analysis of fingerprints and get to the core of someone's personality and this would also help you while making a prediction about the upcoming events in someone's life so the other two factors are the first thing which you need to understand is the axial tri radius this point is very important not many palmists have you know done research on this have done work on this so we'll just start discussion on this so very first thing is 
see like the way i was telling you people that the see first thing is in which we have discussed the uh, ridge patterns which get formed on the tip of the fingers we have also discussed the special kind of patterns get formed on the palm but along with that when it comes to judging the state of a mount the mount which is found at the bottom of the finger the puffed portion i have also i have always emphasized that you know when at the time of you are judging the state of the mount just check where the triradis uh, is placed whether it is high set on the mount or whether it is low set so this is the triradis which i am talking about you know this kind of this kind of pattern so the thing is see it's very simple when it comes to the you know studying the axial triradi the first thing is that we have to first uh, check the state of the triradi which gets formed at the bottom of the finger on the mount so this will be known as a digital triradi so this triradi which is getting formed the triangular pattern if we'll see see if your hand has got a rough texture of the skin so you can immediately see it right you know even watching this video but if your skin is soft then you might even have to use the magnifying glass because in the soft texture of the skin the uh, the these rich patterns the print patterns doesn't get you know distinguished very clearly so let's say for example this is your skin texture is rough so you can see this on the mount this kind of triangular pattern getting formed so for this discussion sake let's just assume this as a this try ready as b this try ready as c this try ready as d so what i what i did was this is the mount of the jupiter on which this kind of triradi gets formed this triangular pattern so this triangular pattern has been taken as a b c d this is one digital triradi digital triradi digital triradi and one another digital triradi on the mount of jupiter mount of saturn mount of sun and the mount of mercury next comes when i say this axial triradi this kind of pattern gets formed on the bottom of your palm so this is see this is your mount of venus this is your mount of moon mount of venus which represents art and beauty you know sensuality this is your imagination so if you just look at your hand carefully you'll find this kind of rich pattern getting formed on your at the bottom of your palm as well so this is something which i'm saying so these kind of ridge layers so the intersecting point they you'll find this kind of intersecting point here somewhat over here at the center which would also making this kind of triradi pattern at the bottom as well so this point is known as the axial triradis this is very important the importance of this you'll get to know when we'll start our discussion on the diagnosis of different kind of inherited diseases inherited problems so this plays a very vital role over there so i'll just give you quick recap so what we did was we uh, we spotted a triradi at the bottom of the finger on the mounts we labeled it as digital triradi so we have 1 2 3 4 over here and the triradi which is getting formed over here the triangular pattern because of the intersecting ridge at the center of the mount of the venus and the mount of the moon will be labeled as a axial triradius so this is something which i am talking about this term axial triradius so this is this point so let's label it as t so then what you have to do is you have to connect this center point of triradi with this t pattern and then you have to connect this pattern with here this this and this so this triangular pattern will be known as an atd angle so what is what is generally you know so what you have to do is that this angle the standard length this angle has to be of 45 degrees if we'll measure it from this the uh, you know the angle of this needs to be 45 degree then we can say that in this palm the atd angle is on a you know standard state this on a standard degree so for that to happen this has to take place over here this axial triradi needs to be get formed over here if let's say for example in your palm this kind of uh, 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 you know axial triradius is getting formed above on the palm so what is going to happen is that that will just increase the degrees which is not considered as a standard state which will be considered as an abrasion so this is with the axial triradius so i have already explained to you this 
spotting the axial tri radius and locating the axial tri radius and the degree of the axial tri radius angle. Now the last is the ridge count which is also very important while doing an analysis and assessment of the print patterns. So first is the loop ridge count. So what do I mean by that? When I say loop ridge count that gets seen on the fingertips. So let's say for example in someone's hand who has got uh, you know loop kind of pattern ulnar loop. So this is the ulnar loop. This is the ulnar loop and we have this kind of you know triangular pattern getting formed over here. So let's say for example this kind of pattern with this kind of you know axial triality in between. So what you need to do is in order to determine the loop ridge count. So the you have to just you have to count the layers of the skin layers the ridge layers from the core of this axial triality to the core of this loop. So let's say for example as you can see this is a uh, you know an uh, ulnar loop so where there are so many layers of this arm. So you have to just reach to the core of this. So this is the core core layer of this loop, this arm. And from here you have to count the number of layers till the core of the tri -ready. So what is going to happen is that if you will find that count in between from 12 to 14, then you can say that in this uh, hand, the loop ridge count is of standard numbers. So from 12 to 14 is the 12 to 14 is the standard number of loop ridge count. Next comes the AB ridge count. What is AB ridge count? We have spotted this tri ready over here A and this is B. So the number of count from the core of this tri ready on the palm to this uh, this uh, core of this tri ready. This needs to be of the count of 34. So this 34 will be treated as, uh, treated as a standard AB ridge count. So I'll give a quick recap again. The loop ridge count is simply the loop pattern which you have spotted on the tip of the finger. So from the core of this layer of this arm, you have to keep on counting the number of layers of this skin ridge patterns and reaching till the core of the axial triarity. You reach the arm, core of the arm, you reach the core of the triarity. If the standard is that it has to be uh, in between 12 to 14, the loop ridge count and the AB ridge count is from the core of this on the palm, AB ridge count gets spotted and judged on the palm. So the from the core of this axial triarity A, uh, reaching till the core of this triarity B, the total number of ridge, uh, AB ridge count needs to be 34. If there will be any abrasion in the number in that, then you can just come to this conclusion that that is an abrasion. Now what is going to happen in the form of abrasion, if there will be any deviation, that will discuss in the next video which will be the last video in which we will discuss only the congenital diseases, the inherited diseases, the abnormalities. When you say someone, you see someone, meet someone, you are, you have, you know, kind of um, uh, diagnosed or detected some kind of, you know, mental retardation, some kind of, you know, abrasion in the behavior. So how can you just determine that in the, from the mediums of the palmistry? How can you look at that from the mirrors of the palmistry? Ki if this person is behaving abnormally, whether this is the influence of some environmental influence or whether he has inherited this from his parents, from his ancestors. So the study and the science of the palm patterns is going to help you big time in order to come to conclusion. So this is all what I wanted to say in this. This is a little bit you know tricky and uh, complicated concept. And if you have understood this clearly, then you have just gained the mastery over the science of palmistry. So I hope I made myself very clear in this video. For furthermore information and notification on palmistry, please subscribe my channel and like my Facebook page. Thanks.